There's a special video tomorrow that is a national choir that's been put together by the National United Methodist Church that's, that's singing a, an Easter hymn. It's really amazing. So that'll be our video that'll be sent out tomorrow. Tuesday, we'll have our regular Tuesday Bible study video. Uh, Wednesday, we'll have our uh, Lenten Bible study video. And this week, the, the focus is the um, boundary-breaking miracles of Jesus. And it's a conversation on how every miracle actually also broke a boundary. So um, that'll be Wednesday. Thursday, there will be a Monday Thursday uh, service, and that'll be online only. Friday will be a good Friday service, and that'll be online only. And when I say online only, if you have friends that get DVDs, they'll, they'll get a DVD. They'll get the DVDs, too. Uh, Saturday, I, I started a practice at the other church because I led the Saturday night service. We always had a Holy Saturday service. So we're going to have a Holy Saturday video. And all of those are already done and sitting there waiting to to go live and then I I'm still waiting for a couple of pieces for the Easter video the Easter video is already at about an hour and 10 minutes and most of that is music that is from Jen's family Jen her niece uh, uh, Lauren and her nephew uh, Logan and her son Devin and 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 his girlfriend whose name I forgot um, but the, it's most, the bulk of it is Easter music by Jen's family. And it, it, it's fantastic. It's just amazing. So make sure, even if you come to the service, watch the Easter video just for the music. It's fantastic. So that's all the videos. There will be starting tomorrow, seven videos, one every day for, for Holy, Holy week. And the kid was great help in pulling those together and and i'm i'm excited to celebrate easter in a big way this year and speaking of celebrating easter in a big way last week i told you based on the signups we would probably still be over here well that changed last week really fast we have it looks like 35 36 people signed up for the second service which exceeds this space so if, wear your Sunday bonnets and your Easter bonnets and Easter dresses, but make sure you wear your Reeboks or your Nikes. But we're gonna have we're gonna have everything set up in the back, and every we'll have the chairs and so forth out along the grass field. Um, I've asked people if they could bring more pop-ups that we can have so we can make more shading. Right now, I've got eight pop-ups. I could probably use two or three more that we can have enough shading for everybody. And um, it, we're gonna have a, a lot of friends here and uh, specifically the bulk of those are at the 10 o'clock service, but um, we'll, we'll celebrate it all together so I don't have to set up twice. <laughs> so um, that'll be next Sunday and our services will be at um, 8.30 and 10. And I will have, um, there'll be more music next week than we've been doing in our regular services. I, I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to, at very least, hear uh, Devin and his girlfriends uh, singing it. They're they're great. They they're fantastic. So, I, uh, is there any questions about next week? Perfect. Please bring your chairs. Yes, please. If you can bring your own chairs, please do that. Yes. Okay. Super. I'm really excited for Easter this year. Last year, I celebrated Easter sitting at my kitchen table watching a video that I made the week before. This year, I get to have Easter out in the California sunshine with my friends, brothers, and sisters in Jesus Christ. So uh, we're, we're still on a journey. And I, and I shared this at the second service last week, but I, I didn't sell it, share it here. We, we are already living in a next. Us being outside for worship is is a next based on where we were at last year. Well, last year, like I said, sitting at my kitchen table watching a video I made the week before, and we're living in a next with us being in the backfield and celebrating the resurrection. And there's more next to come, 
but please, please journey with me safely and, and patiently as we get to the next next. Let's join together in prayer. Give thanks to the God who welcomes us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Remember Christ who calls us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Praise the spirit who fills us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Okay, so that was the practice. So I again, that we're outside, there's benefits of being outside. And one of those is we can respond because we're outside. So if you can see the screen, everywhere that it says Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, that's your part. Okay. Give thanks to God who welcomes us. Remember Christ who calls us. Praise the spirit who fills us. I almost believed you. It sounds like an 8.30 I just woke up crowd. <laughs> well, that, that's true. That's true. As we move into our time of personal prayers, let's move into our time of prayers for individuals who have health concerns and people that we're just worried and, and praying for and people who are in places of grieving and loss and just people that have very unique aches and pains and they need to experience the presence of Jesus Christ in a very unique way. Again, just through some reminders as we deal with um, issues of grieving. Uh, my, my family, we had Gretchen's mom's funeral last Thursday. So prayers for my father-in-law, Jim, my wife, Gretchen, Molly, Annie, all of their uh, cousins and my wife's sister and my wife as, as we all together continue to grieve the passing of my wife's mom. Um, prayers for the Hans family for the passing of Kenneth. Again, prayers for John Holt and the Stiber family for the passings of Jan Stiber. And also continued prayers for all of our dear friends dealing with issues of cancer, Les and Jean's daughter, um, Larry and Kathy and Larry's brother and brother-in-law. Um, um, also the Coffin family as we're they're dealing with issues of of cancer as well as um, um, Kathy Vasquez's daughter. I forgot to write her name down. Christine, who is um, uh, dealing with issues of, of cancer. As, as we deal with all these people who are, are, are just uh, dealing with places of loss and concern, let's hold a moment of silent prayer. Please be in prayer. And as you're praying for these to make sure that I shared the names of uh, Jim Coffin and Connie Hall, Jim dealing with stomach cancer and Connie dealing with breast cancer issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we deal with issues of unknowing and issues of needing guidance, I, again, I, I, I share um, Maggie Coffin's name in this as, as she is a caregiver for Jim through his uh, journey with st stomach cancer. I, I share Rosemary Cole's name as she has been a, a frontline caregiver for Connie Hall, uh, uh, Larry and Kathy and Les and Jane, and everybody that is, is the caregivers of individuals dealing with, with, with these health, health concerns. Also, we deal uh, with issues of chronic pain that, that uh, it, that affects our uh, decision making and so forth as we pray for Marie Fisher who is dealing with issues of chronic pain as we pray for David McNally who is still healing from uh, soldier, soldier surgery and also uh, praying for Sandra Jack as a caregiver to Ron uh, on his cancer journey as, as well. 
just there's so many caregivers and so many people that have to make decisions for themselves and for others in very intense situations. So for all these places of, of decision making, please be in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And as always, our final selection of prayers are for the unspoken prayers. As we pray for the ones that have issues that they are either afraid to share because of the response or issues that they just don't know how to voice. Let's take a moment of silent prayer for those who hurt silently. Please be in a place of prayer. Gracious way, uh, gracious, precious God, in all ways and through all things, be with us. Precious God, through our needs and our concerns, guide us. Bless us all, Lord, as we turn to you at the feet of your cross to ask for care and comfort. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. So I'm going to give you a preview of one of our Easter songs. This is uh, Chen's. Our, our song this morning is uh, Jen's son, Devin, a special uh, guitar offertory for us.
let's continue in our time of prayer. God of passion and palms, come to us this day. Enter our hearts as you once entered Jerusalem, full of passion and purpose. Help us receive you with joy and thanksgiving, that we may enter your ministry and be counted among your people. In the name of Christ, our cornerstone, we pray. Amen. And as we continue in our places of praise, let's join together as we share together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks to God above. For God's promises are true. And Christ's grace is ours. The steadfast love of our God endures forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied to a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king, what blessing is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of your word. Amen. Precious God, be with us today as we celebrate this wonderful event leading towards the cross of salvation. Be with us today, God, as we look at our place in that journey. And to know that although that there are some major key point moments, there are other moments that we don't think of that prepare the way. Precious God, we thank you for all the ways that you have prepared a way to forgiveness for us. And be with us today as we celebrate them. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. I'll remember to look behind me at Paul and the Allers today. As I also turn around and, and talk to you, I want us to think about this celebration. And I'll, I'll give you a, a quick history lesson real quick. As, as the Palm Sunday experience is very much a part of our celebration of what makes us Christians. I'll share with you, and if and I'll I'll have lunch with you, and I'll talk over it with you. If you had to ask me what our major holiday is as people of faith, I would share with you that it's Easter. Many of our friends who may not have a place of traditional practice that may not sit and worship every Sunday and listen to the pastor drone on for about fifteen minutes and get finally be able to be set free and go home many of our other friends may say it's christmas and and christmas is a is a bright and wonderful day because it's the day that the savior was born but for me 
in one instance where we celebrate a birthday, the other instance we celebrate a resurrection that conquers sin. So my major holiday and the one that I always look towards the most is Easter because Easter is the one that makes Christ the risen Savior. When we begin our Easter journey, we commonly kick it off with this Palm Sunday account. This is the movie, if you like the old cowboy movies, I'm going to move a little bit closer. No, then Nancy won't see me. Mike, do you care if you don't see me? I got to pick you or Nancy. <laughs> okay. If you remember watching the old cowboy movies, uh, John Wayne or Clint Eastwood rides in the town, and that's the pivotal moment that you know that something different is about to happen. The hero rides in the town, and you know that that person is there to spark some kind of change that's going to make the town better. That's usually where that the cowboy movies start. If we use that same writing scenario, that's where the Easter week service starts. And for many of us, it's where we really start practicing and focusing in on Jesus Christ riding in the town, riding into Jerusalem on the back of his trusted donkey to make a major change take place throughout the world. Today, I want to share with you things on a little bit of a different level. And where I just shared with you, I'm more of an Easter Christmas than a Christmas Christian. I will share with you that we need them both for any of it to happen. And where so many times that we look at the Palm Sunday ex events as Jesus Christ riding into town, becoming the one who is going to spark change for the world, those changes sparked in Bethlehem, the day that Jesus Christ was born. And that journey to the cross started day one. I want us to think about something that's hard to see in the moment. And many times we have to look backwards in our lives to see how God is really active. We have key moments that we celebrate. We celebrate the first time that we went to church. And we have that key moment, that marking moment that says, this is the first time that I had an interaction with faith. When I walked down the aisle at Cornerstone Baptist Church as a 14-year-old to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, that's a key point moment that I can say, this was a moment of justifying grace in my life, that I had interaction with Jesus Christ and Christ became mine. I can move to the moment at the First United Methodist Church of Bristol, Tennessee, when I sat down in Pastor John Farmer's office and said, I think I want to be a pastor one day. I can mark that down as a key moment. And then moving to California. And then going through candidacy. And then becoming ordained. I have all of these key moments that I can point to just as much as we point to this key moment of Monday, Thursday being a starting point. But many, many things happened to get to that starting point. If it wasn't for Mildred Grindstaff not finding her place in faith, her grandson, Michael Andrew Davis, may have never gone to church. The story started before my key moment. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ preparing me to be in Bristol, Tennessee at a moment looking for an occupation and wanting to be in some place of church leadership and the First United Methodist Church not needing a youth director all in that key moment, I may have never began my journey that has led me to be standing here today. There's so many small moments that come along the journey that gets us to the key moments that we can shout Hosanna in the highest and we know that the story is about to change. Our first prayer exercise today is, I want you to pray over the things that you don't remember. I want you to pray over the small things that took place that put Jesus Christ on someone else's heart so they could introduce you to Jesus Christ. I want you to celebrate maybe the key moment that put you and that special someone in your life in the same room that you met for the first time and now you've been married 50, 60 years. There's so many key moments of celebration, but without the moments of journey to get to that place, those key moments don't happen. Let's be in a moment of prayer for the ways 
that Jesus Christ, that God prepares pivotal moments. Please be in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So we see these key moments that Clint Eastwood or the Lone Ranger, John Wayne, rides in the town, and they become the one that can fix the situation. But so very infrequently do we see the preparation that they took to get to that point. We know about the death of Dan Reed that caused John Reed to want revenge against Bush Cavendish and he became the Lone Ranger. But we don't know all the times how John Wayne got his shooting skills or how he became the tough hero that rode in the town. Thankfully, we see that as we begin to tie the importance of the birth narrative into the resurrection narrative. We see a young boy that was born to a carpenter being bored to a person that understands what it means to get their hands into something and to work with something and to shape it to look like something new. We see the image of a young boy being born to Mary and her mothering nature creating the empathy and care that creates the Savior. We see the story of the one who was lost in the temple far away from his parents, and when their, his parents finally found him, He's there reading from the Torah and speaking with authority. We see the preparation as the hero goes out to the wilderness to face the villain eye to eye to be tempted and to a point that he knew he could withstand, he could withstand temptation. We see the story of the hero who pulls his posse together and, and they go on a journey and they travel from town to town preparing each other to become the ref representatives of faith until that this posse rides together into the main streets of town, just like the cowboy hero. And we see the hero ready to face his biggest battle. I want us to think about the moments that we have found ourselves at a key moment. The key moment that we decided that church was so important to us that we wanted to be outside at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning celebrating Christ instead of sleeping in or, or reading the paper and having a cup of coffee. The point that we decided that our faith was so important that we decided to take places of leadership, either as a member of the finance committee or of SBRC or as a church pianist or as a child care director and talking about what it means to have something so important in our lives that we want to pass it on to other people. We have those pivotal moments where a husband sits down with a wife and says, this is what I want to do, and I got to go to school and spend more money to do that. All of those pivotal moments of preparing that got us to a place that on one Easter morning, we're all sitting together in a backfield shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I want you to think about the things that give you your identity as the hero in your story. And I want you to pray a prayer of thanks to God for all the steps that prepared you for that. Please be in a moment of prayer. And as you're praying, as I turn around to a our dear friends in the cars, I'll make sure I said trustees and Sunday school in that blessing points too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
So the child was born, and because of the relationships he had, he began to form an identity that would help him become the Savior. A child is born, and he goes through life events that he collects friends, he collects experiences, he collects opportunity, he collects skills, and becomes equipped to become the hero of the story. All of those connecting to our cowboy heroes that learn things as farmers or rode into town as sharpshooters with moments of compassion to be the heroes of the story. But unlike the cowboy heroes, here's where our stories start to become different. As we remember that the Lone Ranger always was there to teach everybody the moral and then he disappears and we hear the phrase uttered, where, did, where, where is the mass man? And you hear high ho silver and he rides off into the sunset. Or we see John Wayne riding off into the sunset or Clint Eastwood riding off into the sunset. Riding off in the sunset looks a lot different for our hero in this Palm Sunday event because as the hero rides in the town and everybody is waiting for him to make the change, they want to see that change. They want to celebrate it with them. They want to watch the hero ride off in the sunset. But unfortunately, the way things look as they get to that Good Friday experience, as I continue to use the narrative of my favorite cowboy, the Lone Ranger, it looks like Bush Cavendish won and the hero died. And Easter gives us a different view of what winning looks like. Because our hero, although laid in the tomb and nailed to a cross and dying and appearing to everyone of reaching an ending to the story that none of us wanted, you don't see the cowboy movie where John Wayne doesn't win. You don't see the cowboy story that the Lone Ranger doesn't say hi ho silver and rides off into the sunset. But within this story, at least stopping the narrative at Good Friday, we see the hero die and we see the town people trying to figure out what's next. Now, thankfully, we are experiencing and living in a next that they didn't know. We know that the hero rides off into the sunset. We know that Jesus Christ conquers sins and death and he rises again from the grave on the third day, but they didn't know it on that day. And on that day, the hero didn't ride off into the sunset, but the hero was placed in a tomb. At this time, I want you to take a moment to pray over your moments of feelings of defeat. And as you pray over them, I want you to say a short moment of gratitude of knowing that even though that Friday may be scary, Sunday morning is coming very soon. Please be in a place of prayer. Thank you, God, for the journey from birth to the cross. Thank you, God, for showing us the growth that you experienced that prepared you to become the hero of the story. And precious God, as we celebrate the blessings of the birth to the cross, we thank you for the miracle of the journey from the cross to the resurrection. In our moments of defeat, remind us that newness is around the corner. Be with us, God. In your son's precious name, I pray. Amen. Today, as we celebrate the blessings that come through the actions of Jesus Christ, we celebrate the ways that Jesus Christ included others into his story. On the ev evening in which Christ gave himself up from us, he was celebrating the Passover feast. Passover was last night. And as Christ celebrated the Passover fe feast, preparing even a longer journey, of a cultural tradition to a newness that comes from the resurrection. He took the bread and he raised the bread and he shared it with those around him and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. And on that evening, he took the cup. He raised the cup 
He shared it with those around him and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my new covenant for now and always. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Precious God, as we celebrate the day, the hallelujah, the hosanna, he is risen, he is risen indeed. The story of the hero riding in the town. Remind us our place in that story as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Please bless these gifts of bread and cup and make them be as your body and blood for us as we celebrate that even though Friday may be menacing and scaring, Sunday is on its way. In your son's precious name I pray, amen. Please receive the gifts of Jesus Christ. The phrase that I stumbled over a minute ago is, where is that masked man? We offer our gifts to you, King Jesus, as you offer your very life to us. Turn our gifts and the blessings for our world in need and help us offer our lives and love to others. With gratitude and hope, we pray. Amen. Please remember to look for your emails all next week. And again, if if you have a friend that gets DVDs, all of the videos that will be sent out on uh, YouTube will also be sent out on DVD. And um, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I look forward to seeing you on Easter. And I do I do have a very special request, and I will send this over email to see if I can get some more help. Um, with the addition of adding extra pop-ups and everything, I, I, I may need some extra hands for setup. So if you could uh, contact someone that could help me or, or if you may be that person that might be able to help. Um, Annie and I will probably need the most help around 7.50 next Sunday and that help will be with setting up the pop-up tents. Uh, so if you're free or, or if you can mention to somebody that is uh, physically able, uh, I would appreciate it. Okay, are you ready? We didn't shout it this year, but let's do it now. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Are you ready? Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org, and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.